Happy New Year, everyone. Um, once again, we're back on the porch. For our door set here, we decided to go with direct glazing uh, rather than the side lights you can buy. You can buy a side, side light, which is basically like a small one of these doors and it has a frame around it already and you sit that in. But of course, if I went and did that here, by the time the frame was in the side light, uh, we'd really end up with a silly amount of glass and it wouldn't be worth it. So the benefit of going for this kind of design where we've made it bespoke is you can get glass cut to fit and that's what I've done. So with the glass, the, the size of the timber frame kind of dictates what how thick you can go. Conventional glass is usually, I think, 24, 28, so it's 28 mil overall, or thicker, especially if it's triple glaze. We've gone had to go down to 24, which I think is probably the old thickness, uh, which means our space between our two panes of glass is 16 millimeters uh, argon filled. But either way, it's, it's a decent um, U value for a porch and it's gonna do the job just right and leave plenty of space for our beading on the outside. Often you hear about people talking about internal and external beading, especially on a UPVC window. And the, the reason for that is those snap in and out. And if you were to have those on the outside, which is what they used to be, then it is much easier to pull them out and get access into the house. So not as secure. Whereas if they're on the inside, of course, that's not an option. Uh, with timber windows, usually, or certainly traditionally, the, the fixed part of the rebate, i.e. the frame is, is here uh, on the inside, and then you put your pane of glass against that, and then either putty or a bead around there on the outside. Now our frame is basically like a traditional window in that we need to externally bead it, or putty it would have been traditionally. So instead of messing around with putties, silicons, mastics, all that sort of stuff, we're going to use a dry, gla dry glazing uh, method, hopefully. Um, we're going to use a double-sided security tape against the window. The frame then sits against, sorry, the glass then sits against that, makes a permanent bond, and then we'll be doing the same on the bead and then fixing it all in. If you really wanted to get through this window, you'd probably have to smash it. Let's hope we don't smash it. Pinch the vacuum from the house, as always. Now this design actually has a cut there for a weather seal. It shouldn't matter, the tape's got plenty else to stick onto, uh, but that's what that is, and I guess that might be used if you were using the fixed side light option. This is the tape, double-sided, and I think it's two millimeters thick, uh, but it compresses, so uh, we can get it a nice seal A bit unnecessary, but I'll use it to help us in. Let's hope it fits, to be honest. Okay. Probably a little bit small. Have a look. Down here at the bottom, I'm actually going to leave them this length, I'll show you that a bit later, but basically leave a draining vent underneath there by just sitting our beading on top of these packers, which will leave a two mil gap along the bottom. This black section of the window, which holds the panes of glass, is a warm spacer. And that is what we want to make sure is equally the side. If you look at the moment, you can make out about a millimeter of that showing. Um, like I said, the pane of glass, I've probably gone a couple of mil too small. Uh, because we want to hide that. But on this side, I can afford to shift it across a little bit. So we'll just even that out. All right, tape's in, super sticky. I think we're good to go. All right, we want to get this right. Great, and there. Uh... There's no going back from that. <laughs> there is no going back from that. That is 
stuck fast. So you've got to get it right first time. It's all fine. Oh, it is. That's great. That is really nice. Right, I put a lot of money on that not going anywhere, but I'll put a clamp here just in case. And I'm going to get on and tape the other one and then we'll cut all the beading at the same time. And like with the weather ceiling, it's all in the corners, get that detail right. Most adhesives like this are, tend to be pressure activated. So you really have to work it in, or even with a roller or something. One thing to remember if you're ever glazing, whether it's a factory made frame or one you made yourself, it'll always tell you which is the external side. It's different coating and in this case we've got toughened glass. So you need to know which is the external facing. Now the next job was to finish off the beads. Now I wanted to add a chamfer to those to give them a bit more of a finished look. So I improvised a little bit and this is my take on the world's smallest router table. Admittedly, there are safer ways to do it, but believe me, this is going absolutely nowhere. And it was a simple way of me getting a nice accurate chamfer on all these square beads. Okay, so I've cut our beading. Now the little caveat is I'm actually not gonna install these today, I'm gonna to pick this up tomorrow because that three mil tape I feel is just a little bit too much for these external beads. I don't really want that big uh, expanse of foam showing. So I've ordered some one mil. So for the time being, I'm just gonna put a couple of pins in these just to hold everything in place. We've got a good overhang, so there's no risk of um, driving rain really making too much of an issue. That's it, tight against the glass. And, and I'm looking at putting a one mil black tape in there. So we're looking at something like that. If I put that three mil in there, you end up with that sort of gap and it's just a little bit more. I kind of need that bit of a reveal on this frame. Chamfer City really, isn't it? Now do let the girls have the fun job of peeling off all the stickers. Peeling off the bits at the end. It's the best bit. <gasps> oh no, there's no door handle. There's no door handle. He says we should do it. How are we gonna get in now? There you go. Thank you. Lucky. Um, I don't really need to go out quite yet because I've still got to put cut the insulation for the floor. Oh, can I help? 
Oh, no, because it's very dusty and dangerous. Sort of stuff. Oh, where's that? Oh, I see that bit. It's fallen out the roof. I wonder where he come from. Can you see on here? There's some lines. Yeah. The shape of the wood. Yeah. It's called the grain of the wood. See these ones go up. Yeah. We want to line those up. The same direction. Yeah. yeah. And I've cut these out of the same type of wood as this, so it should match. And that's how we're going to fill these holes. Hit the wood around it just lightly. Okay, we just see it all the way in. Lightly, that's it. Right, this is how we're looking on the outside. Apart from it being a miserable day, it's looking pretty good. Um, the, all those plugs that went in where the screws, where these face boards are screwed in, um, they are now prepped, sanded, and I've put a coat, another coat of finish on all of that. And then on a really nice warm day, I'll probably give it one final coat to seal everything in. And also down the bottom, we need to put that water bar, uh, weather bar on the bottom of the door. So that was it for the glazing. Uh, we need to revisit that when the new tape arrives and also when I can get those little bottom sill beads made up with the drainage underneath. Uh, but once that's done, uh, that'll be the outside pretty much there. The next video and the next stage was to get the lock and the handle all installed. So that'll be the next video. And then we're pretty much just back into the inside and we can start the fit out all the paneling, the trim, and all the fine, fine details that take far too long. But anyway, that will follow. And the final little victory for this week of projects was to rip out one of the two plastic doors, which will be replaced with another oak door like this. But that's it. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>